How to Reduce Pesticide Exposure Pesticides are designed to control the nuisance and damage caused by pests and have contributed to reducing disease and increasing food production worldwide. But the availability and widespread use of pesticides also has the potential to pose unexpected risks, both directly and indirectly, to our health. In the U.S., over 4.5 billion pounds of pesticides are used each year, with 75% used in agriculture and 25% in homes and gardens. The prevalence and widespread use of pesticides has increased our exposure to a variety of chemicals, while the long-term health implications are still being studied. As humans, we're exposed to low levels of pesticides every single day. Pesticides contain harmful chemicals that are dangerous to ingest, which is why you might want to avoid them in your daily life. Many common household products are pesticides, such as insect repellents, bleach, and pool chemicals. Because pesticides are designed to have an effect on living things, they can be harmful to people and the environment, especially when they are used, stored, or disposed of improperly. In this video, we've described some ways you can reduce your daily pesticide exposure and keep you and your family members safe. Welcome to The Guardian's Choice. How to Reduce Pesticide Exposure Number 1. Buy a variety of fruits and vegetables. Different fruits and vegetables use different types of pesticides. If you eat too much of the same thing, you're more likely to get exposed to a single pesticide over and over. Try to go for a variety of produce so you aren't ingesting one particular pesticide. Even organic produce can contain trace amounts of pesticides. Eating a variety of fruits and vegetables is good for your health, too. Mix it up every time you go to the grocery store to get healthy, balanced meals in your diet. Number 2. Wash all your produce with running water. Water can wash off any residual pesticides on the outside of your produce. Before you start eating, head to the sink and rinse your fruits and vegetables under water for a few minutes. If you have any firm fruits or vegetables, like melons or root vegetables, give those a good scrub with your fingers before drying them off. Running water is slightly abrasive, which is why it's preferable to soaking your fruits and vegetables. You may have heard about fruit and vegetable soaps or washes. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, says that there's no need to use a produce wash, running water is just fine. Rinsing your produce can help remove some pesticides, but not all of them. Number 3. Peel your fruits and veggies whenever you can. Try not to eat the outer layer, as that's where pesticides are. Use a potato peeler or a knife to scrape off the outer layer of your fruits and veggies, like apples, carrots, cucumber, zucchini, and potatoes. This also helps remove dirt and bacteria, so it's a win-win all around. Although you probably wouldn't do this anyway, you should never eat fruit peels, like oranges or bananas. Since peels are the very outer layers of the fruit, they tend to accumulate the most pesticides. Number 4. Throw away the outer layer of leafy vegetables. Peel off the outer layer of lettuce or cabbage and throw it away. Pesticides tend to congregate on the outside of produce, which is why you'd want to avoid this outer layer. Since you can't peel leafy vegetables, just get rid of anything on the very outside that you don't want to eat. Once you've peeled off the outer layer, you can rinse the rest of the produce in running water. Number 5. Trim the fat from meat and fish. Pesticides tend to accumulate in the fat of animals. When animals eat pesticide-covered crops, the chemicals stick to the fatty tissue. If you eat meat, poultry, or fish, use a carving knife to cut off any fat before cooking and eating. You should also remove any skin, as pesticides tend to accumulate there as well. If you purchase meat and fish from a deli, you can ask them to trim the fat off for you before you buy it. Pesticides also tend to work their way up the food chain, for instance, if a grasshopper eats a pesticide-covered plant, and then a mouse eats that grasshopper, the mouse will accumulate pesticides. Then, the owl that eats that mouse will also be affected by the pesticides. Number 6. Try growing your own food in a garden. Join a community garden or make one in your very own backyard. When you grow your own produce, you know exactly where it's coming from, and you can choose not to use pesticides on any of your crops. Plus, it's a great way to learn more about where our food comes from and how to eat healthy. Before you start your own vegetable garden, look up which vegetables grow well in your region. You can also look up what time of year is best to plant certain vegetables. 
If you want to join a community garden, contact the head gardener to reserve a space you can use. Follow all the steps in this video for the best results, and don't forget to subscribe to get all the household tips and tricks you don't want to miss. Number 7. Prevent pests from entering your garden naturally. If you have a garden, you don't need to use pesticides for pest prevention. Instead, weed your yard and garden often to deter pests and clean up clutter that might attract insects to your yard. Drain any standing water and keep your grass cut short to encourage bugs to head elsewhere. If you're growing your own food, you can use natural pest repellents like neem oil or peppermint oil to keep insects from eating your plants. Number 8. Wear gloves when handling pesticides. If you work with pesticides, it's important to keep yourself safe. Be sure to put on gloves, wear long pants and sleeves, and always wear closed-toed shoes. You might also want to cover your head with a hat or a bandana to cover most of your exposed skin. This is especially important if you work in the farming industry, since you probably come into contact with pesticides often. If you regularly mix or handle pesticides directly, experts recommend wearing a chemically resistant suit and safety goggles. Number 9. Wash any clothing that comes into contact with pesticides. You can bring pesticides home with you if you aren't careful. Before you head home or interact with your family, take off your clothing and change into clean clothes that haven't been contaminated. When you get home, throw your clothes into the wash as soon as possible and try not to let your other family members touch them. If you have to interact with your children before you change out of your pesticide-exposed clothes, try wrapping them in a clean blanket or towel for extra protection. Number 10. Clean your house, car, and pets regularly. Pesticides take much longer to break down in your home than outside. If you work with pesticides, you may have an accumulation of them in your home, in your car, or on your pets. You can avoid this by vacuuming your carpets, mopping your floors, cleaning out your car, and bathing all of your pets as often as you can. Pesticides need sunlight to break down, which is why they tend to accumulate in dark, dusty corners of your home or car. Number 11. Use non-chemical traps for insects. You can trap and kill insects without any harmful chemicals. Figure out what type of pests you have, wasps, ants, roaches, termites, or spiders, and pick up a trap made specifically for that insect. You can find a lot of non-chemical insect traps at your local hardware store to keep your home pest-free without any pesticides. Sticky traps and flypaper are very common insect traps that work well for almost any pest. Number 12. Keep all harmful chemicals locked up. Protect your children by locking away any pesticides in your home. Use a child lock for small children and try to keep poisonous chemicals out of their reach. Never put chemicals into containers that could be mistaken for food or drink since that's an accident waiting to happen. If your child ever gets into any pesticides, call poison control or head to the emergency room right away. Did this video help you? Let's comment below, yes or no. Consider this before purchasing chemical pesticides. 1. Do a few weeds in your yard require a whole lawn pesticide application or would a spot treatment take care of the problem? If the problem is small, do you need pesticides at all? Determine how much you can tolerate certain pests, insects and weeds to reduce your use of pesticides. 2. Integrated pest management strategies can reduce the need for chemical pesticides. 3. It is important to identify the pest before determining the best course of action. 4. Pesticides labeled broad spectrum are meant to treat a wide variety of pests, whereas selective pesticides treat one or a few pests. Pesticide products typically list target pests on the label, so review this to make sure your pests are listed. Choose the method that works best for you and your situation and help to reduce the risk of pesticide exposure. Follow this channel to learn many more household tips, tricks, and life hacks like this. If you have other tips, please share them with us in the comments. Hope you enjoy, see you in the next video.